All right, what's up and welcome to the Celtics post game live as the Celtics fall in game two to the Miami Heat. 111-101, your final score. Tom Giles, Eddie House with you. And uh, Celtics were up three at the half. And then Miami just went on a run there in that third quarter, a 20-5 to run. There was also a 10 nothing run within that. But what happened there in that third quarter? Eddie? Well, the thing about it is except that end of the second quarter run by Jalen Brown himself, Miami controlled this game. They controlled the tempo. They controlled the pace. They controlled the physicality of the game. And when the, the thing that I was looking at is like when things went sideways for the Celtics and they didn't get the right call, they were worried about talking to the ref about it. Well, some of those same calls happened for the Miami Heat, and Miami Heat went to the next play. And that's something that I talked about before game one and pregame was leave the referees alone, just play the game, get on to the next play. Um, you know Miami's going to come out fighting. They're going to play. I didn't think they would be able to shoot the three, uh, make 23 threes. I didn't think that, that would, they would be able to continue to knock down the three the way they did. But you got to give them credit. They came out here. They played hard. They played physical. And we were never able to match that. I mean, Christoph Porzingis got pushed off his spot continuously. Um, didn't have a great game. And you still had opportunities to win this game. With all that being said, you just can't. And we heard Scal say it on the broadcast, you know, uh, you let go of the rope. It's just we're tired of hearing that. You can't, especially at this time, okay? I can hear that in November, maybe. I hear that in December. But when we get here in uh, late April, you know, mid -April, late April, and you're going into May and going into June trying to win a championship, there is no letting go of the rope. It's, it's, it's grabbing it tighter and pulling it close to you. So, to me, I just look at, uh, you know, this is one of them opportunities you had to go up 2-0 now. Miami feels like it's a series. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. And the series just had 1 1. Now, it, I, you go back, you brought up the three pointers because, again, they were, it's not just that they made 23, they were 23 of 43. So they did it at a ridiculously efficient rate. But defensively, what did you see from the Celtics? Because it felt like it, it, the ironic part was that we talked about how's Miami going to be able to score on them. And then we got to the third and fourth quarter. And was, how are the Celtics going to get a stop here? I just felt like everything was just a half count off. Um, they wasn't hard enough. That's a late contest right there. It looks like it's a contest. That right there, that's a late contest. It looks like it's a contest, but it's not. That's really that's another late contest. I feel like they were just a count late on everything that they were doing right there. Even though his hand is up, that's still a late contest. And I always say a late contest is just like no contest because as pros, once you get up and get into your rhythm and don't have anybody in your airspace and you see the target and you're able to let it go, there's nobody around him right there. They got a lot of open shots, a lot of late contests shots. I just feel defensively we just weren't engaged. And I, I don't know where that comes from. I can't explain it. Um, when you have an opportunity to put a kind of get a stranglehold on this series to go up 2-0, then all you got to do is split on the roll. You're 3-1 after that. And, you know, you just take care of business or sweep um, if you can go get two on the roll. But now you got to come back home. You know, that's good for the Garden fans. They get the opportunity to see the Celtics play again. But you just extending this series when I don't, I don't feel like you needed to. They were just a half count late, I feel like, on everything. Even offensively, they got pushed off their positioning. Um, you know, when Scal gets here, he'll be able to even exp uh, explain that even more because he was right court side. But I was sitting up and looking at it. Our offense was starting out a little further, and that's what I expected. Remember at pregame, yeah. I said, I feel like they're going to get in us. They're going to push our spot. That's why you had to meet their physicality. And when people talk about physical basketball, it's not always you're just out there throwing elbows and you're running through people and doing all. No, it's, it's the early, dirty work that you do. You meet somebody at the free throw line. He's trying to get to the block. I work him. I work him. I work him off the block. And we did some of that. But for the most part, Miami did that for the whole game against us. All right. You, you also uh, you, you look at the number of guys who stepped up for Miami in this one. Tyler Hero had six threes. Uh, Caleb Martin had, had five threes of his own. He was five of six. He had Hakez, Jovic. They each had three threes. Highsmith had three threes. And then on the Celtics I side, I went out things, there and got two threes well, the way I, they were guarding tonight. <laughs> But you look at the Celtics side of things, and it just felt like it was Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and, yes. and that was really it. It wasn't the supporting cast that we're used to seeing from this team. Yeah, you got to, on the flip side, give the Miami Heat credit for that. You know, um, game one, what did they do? They doubled Jason Tatum, and, and I said in the pregame, I said, I don't think that's going to be 
their game plan. They're not going to do that. They're not going to allow the other guys to get off and get going by doubling him and paying too much attention to him. Hey, they're going to play the guard your yard thing, but they'll help at times and they'll maybe send a double team if it's in a certain situation. But for the most part, when, uh, the guys just didn't have any rhythm. You know, besides that Sam Hauser uh, three he hit early in the first half in the corner, I don't think that I've really seen the guys get any good looks. So for me, it, it all started on the defensive end, though. You know, and one thing has to lead to the other, and sometimes it does. When you're not playing great defense, your offense suffers from it. And sometimes when you play great defense for the most time, your offense benefits from it. And I thought that that was the case tonight for the Boston Celtics, that our defense uh, made our offense suffer because we just we, we just weren't that good defensively. Real quick, before we uh, bring Scal in here, Christoph Porzingis, that was, I think, as much as we've seen him struggle, uh, if not in a Celtics uniform, at least in quite some time. But what looked off about him tonight? I just felt like they were physical with him. Um, they, they pushed him off his spot. Um, they bumped him. They banged him. And every time that he caught it, it wasn't it wasn't an easy – it was nothing comfortable. I, I think what they did tonight, they made him uncomfortable in his position. He got – you know, look at everything that they're doing. It's, that's not a comfortable shot. I don't care what anybody says. I know he's seven feet tall, but nothing that he did was comfortable. He was off. And I thought we kind of started looking for him too much instead of just playing the game of basketball. And if he happens to be the guy to get the pass, cool, we could live with that. But I, felt, I felt like we were really trying to hunt that matchup with him and trying to get him going and go to work. Like right there, I felt like Drew Holiday could have went to work or have him, if you want to reestablish, have him come out and set another screen. Yeah. You know, and, and get going, get some movement instead of just being – I thought we were just a lot – really stagnant offensively. Real, I mean, that was the key to the game. I mean, if, minus to us not getting out in shooters and not respecting the Miami Heat as shooters as they hit. So think about it. We gave up a franchise record for threes, fourth most in NBA history, and two starters out. You're talking about rookies and second-year players, guys with no experience, and they make 23 threes against us. That's one side of it. The offensive side of it to me was exactly what you just said. We're hunting out matchups. Why? Why? Every, there is a matchup. Everywhere you look, there's a matchup. If you just drive the ball, create rotation. But the way we're doing it is throw the ball inside, dribble, dribble, dribble. You think the Miami Heat aren't going to be ready for that? They're ready for that. Spolster's ready for that. And they were allowed to be more physical, more handsy because it's the playoffs. So I don't understand why we went to that. I just don't. I think we should have went to more of a driving kick game, use our skill set, which is space and shoot and all of a sudden we just threw that away. Well, I think it was a byproduct of our defense. We weren't playing any defense and a lot of times this year when we talk, when we see the, the Celtics lose games this year, right? They didn't lose many in the regular season, but when they did it was a byproduct of them not being engaged defensively. Uh, I felt like from the gate they was like a step slow. You t remember you said, don't come out half-stepping, right? Yeah. I felt like that's how they came out. They came, That was the definition of half-stepping, like you're a half count, count late. Now I come at it looked like I contested the shot, but you know a late contest is no contest. Yeah. And that's uh, to, to me, that's really where everything stemmed from. From not having good defensive possessions leads to us not having good offensive possessions. 33s in, in basically five quarters. That's that's unacceptable. If, like we're, if we're trying to win, like we know this is a three-point shooting league and we're just going out there. How many more threes do they have to hit before we finally like flip a switch and say I'm not giving up no more threes? And that to, very disappointing to say that they never made I don't want to say an adjustment they didn't it wasn't that it's like coming out and just not contesting Urgency. a guy why would you do that when a team has already hit 13 14 15 16 threes at what point do you say all right they're making them tonight I think at the beginning of the game we did not have the sense of urgency that I believe that you have to have in a playoff game we know that that's a desperate team Miami Heat was a desperate team coming in they desperately need, needed to win this game to have any shot of winning the series or having any shot of having sure. any confidence to win this series. And I just don't think that our level um, – of effort. I don't think that our attention to detail was there for whatever reason. Everything seemed like a count late. The pass, a half second late. Not on time. It was on target, but it was just a little bit late. Yeah. I just it felt like they, it, it, they were just off. Like it, And you, you just can't have off nights in the playoffs. I'm sorry, not everybody. And, yeah. and the two stars did not have night, uh, off nights. It was everybody else.